The Green Book by Muammar al-Gaddafi Part 1. The Instrument of Government The instrument of government is the prime political problem confronting human communities. The problem of the instrument of government entails questions of the following kind. What form should the exercise of authority assume? How ought societies to organize themselves politically in the modern world? Even conflict within the family is often the result of the failure to resolve this problem of authority. It has clearly become more serious with the emergence of modern societies. People today face this persistent question in new and pressing ways. Communities are exposed to the risks of uncertainty and suffer the grave consequences of wrong answers. Yet none has succeeded in answering it conclusively and democratically. The Green Book presents the ultimate solution to the problem of the proper instrument of government. All political systems in the world today are a product of the struggle for power between alternate instruments of government. This struggle may be peaceful or armed, as is evidenced among classes, sects, tribes, parties, or individuals. The outcome is always the victory of a particular governing structure be it that of an individual, group, party, or class, and the defeat of the people, the defeat of genuine democracy. Political struggle that results in the victory of a candidate with, for example, 51% of the votes leads to a dictatorial governing body in the guise of a false democracy since 49% of the electorate is ruled by an instrument of government they did not vote for, but which has been imposed upon them. Such is dictatorship. Besides this, political conflict may produce a governing body that represents only a minority, for when votes are distributed among several candidates, Though one polls more than any other, the sum of the votes received by those who received fewer votes might well constitute an overwhelming majority. However, the candidate with fewer votes wins and his success is regarded as legitimate and democratic. In actual fact, dictatorship is established under the cover of false democracy. This is the reality of the political systems prevailing in the world today. They are dictatorial systems, and it is evident that they falsify genuine democracy. Parliaments Parliaments are the backbone of that conventional democracy prevailing in the world today. Parliament is a misrepresentation of the people, and parliamentary systems are a false solution to the problem of democracy. A parliament is originally founded to represent the people, but this in itself is undemocratic, as democracy means the authority of the means and not an authority acting on their behalf. The mere existence of a parliament means the absence of the people. True democracy exists only through the direct participation of the people and not through the activity of their representatives. Parliaments have been a legal barrier between the people and the exercise of authority, excluding the masses from meaningful politics and monopolizing sovereignty in their place. People are left with only a facade of democracy, 
manifested in long queues to cast their election ballots. To lay bare the character of parliaments, one has to examine their origin. They are either elected from constituencies, a party, or a coalition of parties, or are appointed. But all of these procedures are undemocratic, for dividing the population into constituencies means that one member of parliament represents thousands, hundreds of thousands, or millions of people, depending on the size of the population. It also means that a member keeps few popular organizational links with the electors since he, like other members, is considered a representative of the whole people. This is what the prevailing traditional democracy requires. The masses are completely isolated from the representative, and he, in turn, is totally removed from them. Immediately after winning the electors' votes, the representative takes over the people's sovereignty and acts on their behalf. The prevailing traditional democracy endows the member of parliament with a sacredness and immunity which are denied to the rest of the people. Parliaments, therefore, have become a means of plundering and usurping the authority of the people. It has thus become the right of the people to struggle through popular revolution to destroy such instruments, the so-called parliamentary assemblies, which usurp democracy and sovereignty, and which stifle the will of the people. The masses have the right to proclaim reverberantly the new principle, no representation in lieu of the people. If Parliament is formed from one party as a result of winning an election, it becomes a Parliament of the winning party and not of the people. It represents the party and not the people, and the executive power of the Parliament becomes that of the victorious party and not of the people. The same is true of the Parliament of proportional representation in which each party holds a number of seats proportional to their success in the popular vote. The members of the parliament represent their respective parties and not the people, and the power established by such a coalition is the power of the combined parties and not of the people. Under such systems, the people are the victims whose votes are vied for by exploitative competing factions who dupe the people into political circuses that are outwardly noisy and frantic, but inwardly powerless and irrelevant. Alternatively, the people are seduced into standing in long, apathetic, silent queues to cast their ballots in the same way that they throw waste paper into dustbins. This is the traditional democracy prevalent in the whole world, whether it is represented by a one-party, two-party, multi-party, or non-party system. Thus, it is clear that representation is a fraud. Moreover, since the system of elected parliaments is based on propaganda to win votes. It is a demagogic system in the real sense of the word. Votes can be bought and falsified. Poor people are unable to compete in the election campaigns, and the result is that only the rich get elected. Assemblies contributed by appointment or hereditary succession do not fall under any form of democracy. Philosophers, thinkers, and writers advocated the theory of representative parliaments at a time 
when people were unconsciously herded like sheep by kings, sultans, and conquerors. The ultimate aspiration of the people of those times was to have someone to represent them before such rulers. When even this aspiration was rejected, people waged bitter and protracted struggle to attain this goal. After the successful establishment of the age of the republics and the beginning of the era of the masses, it is unthinkable that democracy should mean the electing of only a few representatives to act on behalf of great masses. This is an obsolete structure. Authority must be in the hands of all of the people. The most tyrannical dictators the world has known have existed under the aegis of parliaments. The party. The party is a contemporary form of dictatorship. It is the modern instrument of dictatorial government. The party is the rule of a part over the whole. As a party is not an individual, it creates a superficial democracy by establishing assemblies, committees, and propaganda through its members. The party is not a democratic instrument because it is composed only of those people who have common interests, a common perception, or a shared culture or those who belong to the same region or share the same belief, they form a party to achieve their ends, impose their will, or extend the dominion of their beliefs, values, and interests to the society as a whole. A party's aim is to achieve power under the pretext of carrying out its program. Democratically, none of these parties should govern a whole people who constitute a diversity of interests, ideas, temperaments, regions, and beliefs. The party is a dictatorial instrument of government that enables those with common outlooks or interests to rule the people as a whole. Within the community, the party represents a minority. The purpose of forming a party is to create an instrument to rule the people. That is to say, to rule over non-members of the party. The party is fundamentally based on an arbitrary authoritarian concept. The domination of the members of the party over the rest of the people. The party presupposes that its accession to power is the way to attain its ends, and assumes that its objectives are also those of the people. This is the theory justifying party dictatorship, and is the basis of any dictatorship. No matter how many parties exist, the theory remains valid. The existence of many parties intensifies the struggle for power, and this results in the neglect of any achievements for the people and of any socially beneficial plans. Such actions are presented as a justification to undermine the position of the ruling party so that an opposing party can replace it. The parties very seldom resort to arms in their struggle, but rather denounce and denigrate the actions of each other. This is a battle which is inevitably waged at the expense of the higher, vital interests of the society. Some, if not all, of those higher interests will fall prey the struggle for power between instruments of government for the destruction of those interests supports the opposition and their argument against the ruling party or parties. In order to rule, the opposition party has to defeat the existing instrument of government. 
To do so, the opposition must minimize the government's achievements and cast doubt on its plans. Even though those plans may be beneficial to the society, consequently the interests and programs of the society become the victims of the party's struggle for power. Such struggle is therefore politically, socially, and economically destructive to the society, despite the fact that it creates political activity. Thus, the struggle results in the victory of another instrument of government, the fall of one party and the rise of another. It is, in fact, a defeat for the people, a defeat for democracy. Furthermore, parties can be bribed and corrupted from inside or outside. Originally, the party is formed ostensibly to represent the people. Subsequently, the party leadership becomes representative of the membership, and the leader represents the party elite. It becomes clear that this partisan game is a deceitful farce based on a false form of democracy. It has a selfish, authoritarian character based on maneuvers, intrigues, and political games. This confirms the fact that the party system is a modern instrument of dictatorship. The party system is an outright, unconvincing dictatorship, one which the world has not yet surpassed. It is, in fact, the dictatorship of the modern age. The parliament of the winning party is indeed a parliament of the party, for the executive power formed by this parliament is the power of the party over the people. Party power, which is supposedly for the good of the whole people, is actually the arch enemy of a fraction of the people, namely the opposition party or parties and their supporters. The opposition is, therefore, not a popular check on the ruling party, but rather is itself opportunistically seeking to replace the ruling party. According to modern democracy, the illegitimate check on the ruling party is the parliament, the majority of whose members are from that ruling party. That is to say, control is in the hands of the ruling party, and power is in the hands of the controlling party. Thus, the deception, falseness, and invalidity of the political theories dominant in the world today become obvious. From these emerge contemporary conventional democracy. The party represents a segment of the people, but the sovereignty of the people is indivisible. The party, allegedly, governs on behalf of the people, but in reality the true principle of democracy is based upon the notion that there can be no representation in lieu of the people. The party system is the modern equivalent of the tribal or sectarian system. A society governed by one party is similar to one which is governed by one tribe or one sect. The party, as shown, represents the perception of a certain group of people or the interests of one group in society, or one belief, or one region. Such a party is a minority compared with the whole people, just as the tribe and the sect are. The minority has narrow, common sectarian interests and beliefs, from which a common outlook is formed. Only the blood relationship distinguishes a tribe from a party, and indeed a tribe might also be the basis for the foundation of a party. There is no difference between party struggle 
and tribal or sectarian struggles for power, just as tribal and sectarian rule is politically unacceptable and inappropriate. Likewise, the rule under a party system. Both follow the same path and lead to the same end. The negative and destructive effects of the tribal or sectarian struggle on society is identical to the negative and destructive effects of the party struggle.